Welcome to episode 36 of Talking Prisoner. Today's guest has been on just about every TV show in Australia, including The Young Doctors, The Henderson Kids, GP, All Together Now, Fire, Stingers, Blue Healers, Neighbours, The Secret Life of Us, Canal Road, Underbelly Files, Jack Irish, Bad Debts and the Dr. Blake Mysteries. She's also in a very well-known female band. She's, of course, Toddy Goldsmith. Welcome to Talking Prisoner, Toddy. And good morning, Ken. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining mm -hmm. us. You've been in everything. <laughs> I have been in everything, yeah. And I've done lots of theatre and musicals as well. So yeah. it's not just, you know, isolated to, to telly. That telly, yeah. Yeah. No. Um, before we I've been start, a long time. you've got to fill in your time somehow, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, now, before we get into Prisoner and Neighbours and a few of the other shows that you've done, can we just learn a little about you growing up as a child? What was your uh, childhood like? Chaotic. I lived. Um, my mother. My mother left when I was two and a half and went back to the UK. So dad had a series of um, wives and many, many children, and he was the doyen of the nightclub industry in Australia. So we lived in the tops of pubs and the tops of restaurants and motels and moved around. And it was um, like a very lovable circus. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Yeah, it was. it was. I mean, but when you have that, you look at your other friends that have a normal life with mum and dad together and three kids and two dogs and... And you go, oh, I want that because it seems so exciting and different and normal. But I, you know, my life is my life, and I'm I'm glad of it. And I had an awesome father. I'm very fond of your dad, who I want to talk about shortly. If that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Can you tell us what you were like at school, and and did you have a favourite or an unfavourite subject? I was terrible at school. I was very distracted. I used to stare out the window all the time. Um, I daydreamed a lot. I wasn't scholastic. Due to what I told you about, that my life was kind of chaotic, I was very unsettled. And when I lived in a, a place in South Yarra at the top of the pub, I used to go across the road to the church to study because it was always so noisy downstairs. So I wasn't the best student in the world. But when I really got into... Um, studying acting and becoming really good at my craft and theatre, I became the best student ever because I was interested in it. I was never born to be scholastic and, um, you know, I was born to be creative, but I've got a very disciplined mind now because I'm doing things that I love. Yeah. And I think that's what's important. If you're doing what you love, you'll do it well. Yeah. I mean, I wish I'd done better at school. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I wish I'd done better, but my circumstances were... Like my, I actually changed schools because I thought I was going to get kicked out of one. So I chose another school that had a very similar school uniform, blue and white checks. My dad didn't even know I was in a new school until the headmistress invited him to meet and greet. Because <laughs> in those days, there was one place that sold school uniforms. It was in the city and you all went to the one place and all you did was your uh -huh. parents gave you a check. So they had no idea. It wasn't like nowadays. It was um, much better. <laughs> That's hilarious. Now, speaking of your dad, now your dad is Brian Goldsmith for the fans that don't know. Now he's called the king of nightclubs. There's been many articles about your dad that have compared his nightclubs to Steve Rubell's Studio 54, which is, you know. Well, that's yeah, that's right. I mean, dad got the idea from traveling overseas and we didn't have anything here. I remember the first, the first, the, the first one that was like not a club, but he had a restaurant called Peanuts. It was underground and it was called peanuts because he put bowls of shelled peanuts on the table and he encouraged people to put shelves on the floor. So it was, so I turned that off. So it was a, sort of a gimmick thing. But the Jackson Five were in town wow. and we created a dance floor the size of a telephone booth. <laughs> there were people up on chairs and tables. And then he got the idea that I should make this bigger. So he built another peanuts gallery and built a proper dance floor. And then it went from there. But he had traveled the world. He was very well traveled. And he'd seen in New York and Europe and everything that people were out dancing. But that hadn't hit the Australian shores yet. Wow. I mean, just to talk about your dad for a moment, he was born on the day the Sydney Harbour Bridge opened in March 19th, 1932, and was the man responsible for creating the nightclub scene in Melbourne 
Goldies in South Yarra in 1959 became the hippest cafe and the work haunt for the cast of the movie on the beach, including Gregory Peck, Ava Gardner, Anthony Perkins, and Fred Astaire. And your dad was an extra in the film also, riding a horse down a deserted street. Is that right? You know, he actually, he was a very handsome man and very rugged looking. And from doing that, he got offered Marlboro. Do you remember Marlboro cigarettes? Yes. And had the guys riding horses. They offered, he asked him to be the oh, Marlboro really? man. And for some reason, he turned it down, which is the, I can't even remember. But um, yeah, he, he had a very colourful life and very charismatic guy. He was clearly he had lots of wives. Yeah. <laughs> so in 1977, he converted a warehouse in King Street, Melbourne, and opened the nightclub, the Underground, which you'd probably been to, Ken, in your day, and had many celebrities frequent his club, like David Bowie, Bob Hope, John Travolta, and many more. So you must have been around a lot of celebrities at a young age with your dad. Yeah, I was. I was around. I mean, it was very normal for me because that's all we knew. I mean, the Osmond brothers were the first famous people I think I met and then the Jackson Five and it went from there. But I, Dad took it in his stride, so I took it in my stride. Dad was never impressed because they were famous. He knew it was good for business, but he was never impressed. He found it quite quirky and funny and colourful. But um, so I've never been impressed, you know. Like I think I get impressed with people's intentions and what they do in their life. And part of the job we do is, is to be public and when people like the Gregory Pecks and whatever reach that level that they're global and well known, I've got respect for their work. But my father never idolized, um, you know, celebrity. It's really good. But he had clubs all around Australia. It wasn't just Melbourne. Melbourne, yeah. Adelaide and Brisbane, Sydney and Perth and yeah. Yeah. Did he ever tell you if he missed it after he had them, you know, in his retirement days? Did he miss the... Well, he didn't retire till really, 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 really late. Yeah. And uh, no, no, because he, he had eight children and all of our partners and children and my dad was a little manic and he just needed stuff going on and there was always stuff going on. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Ken, sorry. Do you, um, do you have any hobbies or, or things that you do in your spare time if you've got spare time? I've just taken up golf. Golf. <laughs> And I tap dance in my spare time and I do charity work. I worked for many years, um, which I know we'll get to a living in John is my aunt. And she started a wellness centre with the Austin Hospital here. And I worked from the ground up on, on that and a number of other charities and, and um, got given an order Australia for my charitable work, which is beautiful. And right now I'm working with a company called The Big Umbrella and we um, we feed people that can't afford to put food in their mouths. We go into the kitchen and chop up all the food and veggies and cook the meat and, and package it and take it into Fed Square or drop it off to the houses. But at the moment, we're, uh, we've got a truck on the way to Lismore and I'm going to be packing boxes the next few days um, full of non-perishables and we've got a massive truck heading up to Lismore with that stuff. So I've always got doing my charitable side or life just doesn't feel as important. Yeah. Do they have a website that we can mention or? The Big Umbrella, uh, I think it's .org. .org. But if they just look up the Big Umbrella on Facebook and Instagram, it'd be great if they could um, give them a follow and some support. It'd be wonderful. We'll put a link up to the interview as well. Um, now, I know we haven't been travelling in the last few years, but what's your favourite holiday destination? Um, there's just so many, you know. I've, uh, in Australia... It's got to be the Northern Territory and the Kimberleys. Um, yeah. I reckon there's so many beautiful places to see in our own country. I've been fortunate enough to go to Europe and Japan. My daughter spent many, many years working in Japan, so I've gone there a lot. But there's nothing quite like our own country, I say. Definitely. Do you have some TV shows that you, you, you like or, or are interested in? Watching? Mm. Oh, so many. Lockdown. I mean, like all of us, I was, I was it's what kept me going. But um, I mean, I've, I've got a very eclectic taste. I don't have one sort of taste, but as long as the acting is amazing or it's, I, I watch a lot of documentaries. I love learning and factual stuff on the planet, on, you know, animals. I, I actually, this might sound really dark, but I 
I really like like the profiling of murderers and oh yeah, how good are they? <laughs> I love them. I'm fascinated with the human condition and where it can tip and go wrong and how that can play itself out. And I think that's from being an actor. You always want to, no matter what who you're playing, you want to empathize and help justify the character. And so, you know, these kind of shows are very interesting profiling of the human condition. And Netflix has got so many of them. It's great. Oh, Stan, there's a lot of them out there. It's not just good old Netflix, but Netflix does. They're really good in that documentary department. They do, yeah. Now, I'm sure you've been asked this question a thousand times over, but about for the fans that don't know your famous auntie, Olivia Newton-John, what's it like having her as an auntie? And if she ever give you any advice in, this, in the entertainment industry? She's not that kind of person. She just, she's not like, do this, do that. She's just, what you see of her is who she is. She's really happy and loving and caring. She's had my back when things have gone wrong, but she's not one to give advice. She's just like, have fun, enjoy. You know, she's all about, um, well, you see her work. She gives 110%. She doesn't take herself too seriously, but she takes her work seriously. And so it's not through her lecturing me or giving me ideas. It's through watching how she is in the world that I've learned a lot. And she's just a beautiful person. She is. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Had you actually seen uh, the movie Grease and, and what did you think of Sandy? It was really weird because I think I was 13 or 14 when that came out. I've gone, <laughs> that's Olivia. And the whole, when she became really famous, because in those days when I was younger, she just was a country singer. Down by the banks of the Ohio, you know, those sort of, and then suddenly she got shot to start him and I, it was really weird and everyone was going nuts and people at school were acting it out and I'm just like, you guys are weird. <laughs> I actually I, did I, I felt really protective of her, if anything, but I did get to meet John Travolta a number of times. Wow. I had such a crush on him. I've never, ever crushed out on a celebrity but him, and I used to write him love letters and never send them. <laughs> I've never told anyone that. But really? I crushed him out. I absolutely crushed out on him. And I'm, I met him, I actually, I've met him many times over the years. And then at G'day LA, a couple of years ago, I, um, they asked me to interview John and Olivia on the stage. And um, they, those crush days were over. He's just a great guy. But when I was, I think, 14, it was like, oh! And then, because he, he taught me how to, well, I took up tap dancing in my mid-50s, except John Travolta tried to teach me a tap step. The first night I met him at the Sydney Hilton and they were, you know, it was like a thing with the family and um, up in Olivia's suite. And he's trying to teach me tap, but I was too gobsmacked to concentrate. I was like drooling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, now, I know we're pressed for time, so we might move on to uh, Neighbours. But before we do, just want to talk about I'm a celebrity, get me out of here before we move on to that. Um, what was it like being in that? My daughter absolutely loved you in it. Oh, thank you. Like? Well, it's, it's why it was amazing. And that's why I did it. Like, when they called up, three things went through my mind straight away. I mean, lots more did. One was, I'm a celebrity, get me out of Melbourne. <laughs> It was an opportunity to, you know, we've had lockdowns been pretty heavy in Melbourne. And um, so the, the, but I'm very after adventures. My life is a series of adventures. I'm really playful and I'm really, you know, open to experiencing things. And you know, I went to Iraq in 2005 and wow. East Timor to, you know, support the troops there. And I'm right up for adventures. And also my ex-husband had had a debilitating stroke. And I thought, I didn't think I was going to win you know, being, anyway, I just didn't, it wasn't that. I just thought if I can at least raise some money and shine some light on the Stroke Foundation, that would be great. And also an opportunity to um, meet some people that I wouldn't normally meet. And, yeah. and also to make money. You know, our, our industry was decimated for a couple of years. I went, well, also I can make a bit of money myself too. Yeah. That's one thing I did notice about that show is the, the friendships that form. It was... Um, yeah. yeah. And they're genuine because, I mean, I'm sure some people are aware of cameras. I certainly forgot about them and I didn't care about them because I wasn't in there to impress or to be anything. I was in there for the experience and it was, it was tough, don't get me wrong, because it was 
cold and damp. I'm not good without food. I was starving. I mean, I kept it to myself, but I really struggled and the lack of sleep because I'd leave these huge bright lights on till God knows what time. We were trying to work it out. It could have been one in the morning and then they'd wake you up really early and you can never tell where the sun was because the forest was so dense and they'd put a tarp over this small bit of light because there were drones coming in trying to work out what celebrities were in there. Oh, really? So they had to protect us. So we couldn't tell where the sun was. So we never knew what time of day it was. Oh, so you had no watch, <laughs> nothing, no phones, no watch. You just no, really... nothing. What? And there was points, there were days where I didn't even have a shower because the shower was outdoors. It was lukewarm and, and it was so freezing cold. The thought of going to all that effort was too much. And so I'd just go and get lady wipes <laughs> and brush my teeth. <laughs> I just went, I'm not, I'm not, I'm like, I can't, I'm not doing a shower, I'm too tired and it's too cold. Yeah. Would you do it again? Um, well, I've done that. <laughs> so why would I do it again? But if they asked me to, yeah, of course I would. But they wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. Me, but, you know, because I've done it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we do want to get to prisoners. So we'll just quickly get to neighbours. You played Cassandra Friedman for three months between January and April 2009. Did you have to audition for the role or you were just... No, no, I got offered the role and my only audition was asking my daughter, Layla, if she thought I should do it because I, she's got to approve everything. And she just went, yeah, and she never watched Neighbours. Ah. But she knew of it. But she wanted me to be in something iconic. And so I said, yes. And then, of course, I meet, you know, I knew Alan Fletcher as a buddy and I knew a couple of the guys from doing other things, Steve, Silvani and whatever. And um, I, and Margot was heaven. And Margot and Layla hung out. Well, we all hung out. And I was her, she called me Mumsy and I called her Bubsy. And her mother was really grateful that I looked out for her in Melbourne. And we all hung out outside of the show. And she is... Um, such a beautiful girl. Well, woman now, and it doesn't surprise me, her yes. success, because she's just driven in a beautiful way, not driven in a competitive way, just in this beautiful, she can dream big, you know, and she was electric and full of light and happiness and joy and kind. I broke up with my fiance while I was doing the show and I was really heartbroken. And one day I must have looked so sad because she just came up and she said, Mumsy, can I get you a cup of tea? Which of course then I burst into tears because when you're vulnerable and someone's kind, <laughs> it's when all the tears come out. But she was just a beautiful, she is a beautiful person. Yeah, no, she is. Um, so before we get on to prisoner, I just want to ask you both because Ken's worked on Neighbours and, and you've worked on Neighbours and we just found out yesterday the recent news of the axing of Neighbours. I'd like to ask you both actually what your thoughts are on that. Can you go first? Oh, okay. Um, look, I've worked on it after prisoner for a, about 18 months to two years. Um, I'm, I'm always sorry to see the end of something that has helped so many actors and actresses and crew and, you know, the cast and crew are, are everything in these, in these programs. Oh. And it's just so sad. Even, even though they've had a fair shot at it yeah. in seven years, it's not a bad run, but even so, I'm devastated to, to, because of all the people that are now going to be out of work and seeking work, and it's sad. Look, I, you know, I echo your sentiments, and, but I also, you know, shows do see ends and new things are born. And so hopefully these, you know, the cast and crew will find themselves a new home. Yeah. But it's, um, I, I just think the end, end of anything iconic is really, and I don't really understand why, you know, Days of Our Lives has been going for, yeah. I don't quite understand why they couldn't find that bit of funding. It's quite beyond me. But look, you never know, they might bring it back. But I, you know, I feel the same way. It's like, that's, really but it's launched so many magnificent careers so let's look at the beauty of it yeah and the gift that it bought and it also let people around the world especially in england because they're such big fans just yeah. a, a little bit of a view into part of the aussie culture you know and the way we are so there's been massive gifts in it but it's always sad to see the end of you know a relationship and it's been a relationship with australia it has. Well, and it fans for so many years. 
Yeah. I think I think I think Fremantle killed it when they moved it to the digital channel. They should have just left it. Channel 10, 6:30, you know, that's what everyone knew. And then Yeah. But, you know, yeah, hopefully they all do get work. It'd be great to see them all back on TV. Can we um, get on to Prisoner, Ken, please? Yes, Prisoner. Okay. Um, you appeared in nine episodes of Series 6 in 1984 between episodes 430 and 445. How did you get the part of Gloria Payne and had you auditioned for any other roles before this? I can't believe I was only in nine episodes because it seems like it was nine months in my memory. No, I had done, I had played um, Tony Sheffield in The Young Doctors and then I went on to play Trixie Sheldon in another nine thing and the producer just put me in it and I felt extremely out of my league, out of my depth. I was overwhelmed with fear. I wasn't really in a good time in my life. I'd had some trauma and I was not traveling that well. So it was all quite overwhelming. Maxine, um, can you help me pronounce this? I don't know. Oh, Ken, Ken loves it. Killing alligators. Killing alligators. She was beautiful to me and very welcoming. But when I walked into that green room and all of those women that I'd seen on prison were all sitting around the table like in character, I was scared. It was, and I was extraordinarily shy, and yeah, and out of my league. I felt totally out of out of my depth, as far as my acting skill as well, to be honest. But I was just like, I stumbled into this work, and I wasn't prepared for it. And if I could, if I was doing it again today, it'd be a whole different thing. But it's in hindsight great. But how could you say no? You yeah. know, I was like, all right. <laughs> I was such a baby. I was a baby at that age. I mean, yeah. you know, 20 year olds now are not babies anymore. But I was more like a 16 year old is now. I just, watched your, <laughs> I just watched your episodes recently. You would never have known you were scared. I mean, you, your acting was brilliant on it. It was. Oh my God. It was great. <laughs> I'm such a little round faced, chubby little thing. <laughs> and I used to get cold sores when I was stressed. So when I had cold sores, they'll go, yay. We're in like, show, make it look worse. So funny. But do you know what was interesting is my girlfriend's boy, my, sorry, my sister's boyfriend at the time got cast in it and he was the husband that was married to someone I was hitting on. I can't remember. It was so long ago. Yeah. He was, he was in it. But, yeah, no, I was just intimidated, to be honest. <laughs> but Annie Phelan. Annie Phelan was beautiful. She, yeah. apart from Maxine, who was just so kind, Ma Annie took me under her wing. She was, that woman was just all heart. And we actually got to work together again further down the track. And I ran into her in a few times throughout our career. And she just melts my heart. She's just a beautiful human being. Yeah. So that was a blessing. I was with Maxine on the weekend with the uh, prisoner event. And she's she's great. Such a such yeah. A I'll event. send in my love. I haven't seen her in a long time. Well, for sure. Had you um, watched Prisoner prior to going on it? Was it a show no. that you were hoping to get? Oh on? yeah. I mean, everyone saw Prisoner. Yeah. I thought you were going to say prior to doing this. No. Um, yeah. yeah. Of course I had, and I was just like, oh my god. But I did it, and I'm brave. Yeah. I went in there. I think I was envious of the extras because they didn't have to do <laughs> Did you actually get any character breakdown on Gloria? I don't remember, but I do. The only thing I really remember, apart from being totally intimidated, was the scene with the hot water being poured over me. I remember that. I can actually really remember that and how I felt. That's the only scene I really, really have visceral memories of. Yeah, that, that was the, ep I, I did have that episode in to talk about, but we won't get through it all. But what was that, what was that scene like, filming that? Um, it was actually, I felt a little more in control in that one because it was so technical. It was like, you've got to step here on this mark where this comes up here, because the cameras have got to get that in one shot. You can't redo these shots. When you're doing soap and it's moving that fast, you can't get saturated 
and redo it. So it was very, very, and I'm like, I was really learning because I love that sort of thing. As it with a dancing background, it sort of made sense to my brain. So it, it was just going through the technicals, but on, on the day when it happened in full motion, I was definitely scared. So hopefully that came across in the scene. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Were you shooting that scene, Ken, when you were working on it? Do you remember? I really can't remember, but you can, you can also, Totty, um, tell the fans that it really wasn't boiling water. <laughs> no, it had dry ice in it. <laughs> it wasn't boiling water. It had dry ice. <laughs> A bit like the steam press. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I think my hand got, oh, I don't know. It was all pretty dark out there in Nunawadding. <laughs> Ken or me? Uh, I think it's you, isn't it? Me, yeah. What did you think of Gloria as a character? Did you enjoy playing it? I did enjoy playing it. If I knew the work I did now to really break her down and work out why she was like what she was like and to give her a personal backstory, I've got, I didn't have technique in those days. I, all I know was that she had done the wrong thing she was sneaky. She stole somebody else's husband. Not your ideal kind of character, but then if you do the work as an actor, you work out why she like this, where does she come from, and you give them this vulnerability underneath it. But I didn't understand the work in those days as an actor. So I didn't play her as dimensionally as I would have liked to. Yeah. Now, you had a, you had a lot of scenes with Annie when we just spoke about it, but did she give you any advice or anything like that when you were working together on those episodes? I think she could just see that I was a deer in the headlights and just gave me a lot of love yeah. and support, you know. <laughs> when actors see actors a little out of their depth, the good ones move in and care for them. Yeah. And she... Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about um, some of the, the cast and crew who no longer are with us, like Gerda and Judith McGrath and um, Kendall Flanagan, the director? Well, Judith McGrath, I remember, she was um, she was lovely. I, I'm just visualising her in the green room. She was um, professional. She wasn't, she didn't need a whole lot of attention in the green room backstage. She did her thing. She was very ladylike and I thought she was lovely. She's the only one out of those three that I've got real memories of. Yeah, yeah, they're oh, great. Um, now, back in when you were on prison, did you receive a lot of attention from the public at the time when you were on the show? I don't remember that. I don't really remember. I think, I think the most attention that I started really getting was when we started the Shantuzis because that went gangbusters. Yes. And... Um, uh, and I, I think I'd grown into my face and my body. And so I was a bit more appealing looking. I was the same person on the inside, but I, um, I grew into, you know, I started slimming down and, you know, um, I, there was much more attention on that because we, we were huge, yeah. but not from nine episodes of Prisoner. Yeah. Mm. No. Are, you, are you surprised, still surprised about how popular the show Prisoner is? after so many decades. Yeah. <laughs> no, what is that? I reckon Neighbours is going to have the same thing. Yeah. But it's like you look at it and you look at um, Orange is the New Black, which was taken from that idea. I think it was, was it the first of its kind? Set in a woman's prison, was it? Very early, very early. Really, really unique and, um, and got that real Australian flavour. And that's what people, you know, seem to love. And it's stripped back from tricks. There's no tricks. Yeah. It's just, you know, this storytelling set in these sort of interesting places. And I think neighbours will do the same thing. Neighbours will never die. No. Have that the same. Yeah. I mean, we haven't got any other shows like Prisoner and Neighbours, have we? That in Blue Healers went for years and we don't hold it up like those shows. Yeah, it's interesting, Matt. Um, talking to Orange is New Black, have you watched that? I did watch it when it first came out, so I was really interested, especially from my experience in, in Prisoner. Yeah, yeah, I was really interested in um, that, and I thought it was great. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic, but not with the rawness and the truth of Prisoner. Yeah. You know, they kind of flowered up characters. 
Yeah. And make, you know, but I think there's something so lovely and honest about Australian shows. <laughs> We have a guest coming on next week from uh, New York, from the Orange is New Black. And, um, really? Yeah, oh, wow. so she was yeah. in the last season of it, and I've been watching a lot of it in the last few weeks because I, I watched it when it first came out. But I f I'm finding it more of a, a dark comedy this time around. Right. Do you know what? When I'm just glad you said that because when I first started watching it, I was getting confused. That's why I didn't yeah. say with it. Yeah. Some of it was very real and raw acted, and then some was almost cartoon comedy sitcom -y. and I was getting confused with what is this genre what am I watching so it was taking me out of it yeah I kept being pulled out of it because I went into my head trying to work out what I'm watching because the actors were literally playing it differently and Ken you tell me as a director wouldn't that have been evened out you know like wouldn't a director be encouraging actors to choose the one genre because it did, it floated between heavy, yeah. dark, dark yeah. and comedy. And I'm going... For a, for a few episodes, because you're trying to work out what it is. Yeah. How you should follow yes. it. And That's sort of what put me off. But I'll watch it again. If yes. it's, you know, like, is it more established now? Maybe it just wasn't established then, but I was a bit, I was confused. Well, it's pretty it now. But I'm, um, seen, I'm going, oh, hang on, that, 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 this is comedy now. And one minute ago, I was almost, my heart was being ripped out by someone. Yeah, well, that's the first time around. I'm watching it the second time around. I'm I'm enjoying it, and also Genji Cohen, who wrote it, she created. Um, I don't know if you saw Weeds. Did you ever see that series Weeds? I brought my daughter up on Weeds because, I, as a single mother, I went. You see what a good single mother I am. I'm not selling drugs. I loved Weeds. Yeah, well, that's that's her. She created consistency of Weeds. It, it does. Weeds is better. Yeah, oh, Weeds, so, hundred percent. And storytelling, and you get in and you stay in there with that character. But it also had some comedy and, and drama mixed together, I found. It did, but not in a confusing way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great show, though. Second time around, I okay. think you enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. I'll go back there on your recommendation. <laughs> Don't hold me to it. No. Um, <laughs> same questions, Ken. Okay. Um, this first one is from Jan Robertson, who is in fact our producer as well. Do you have a favourite role and did you have any other career goals and ambitions? Um, yeah, I always wanted to play Janet in the Rocky Horror Show and I did in Sydney. Um, I all, I've always wanted to get given, especially the older I got and the better I got at acting, be given darker roles and I have, but they've all been in theater. And you guys don't know that I do theater because it doesn't go to air. <laughs> but hopefully I'm hoping that those characters will be taken into screen one day. And, um, but as far as favorite roles, um, you know, I walk away with the memory of the experience that I had and Neighbours is up there, not as a, character or my work but as an experience of having a really beautiful time yeah but um i just i did a film the taverna recently we did on a shoestring and we were finishing at three in the morning because it was night shoots and what i loved about that was the camaraderie and we we're all on deck and doing it for hardly any money because the writer, director, producer had lost his funding for another project oh. and we all jumped in to help him. Oh, wow. And the feeling of that was so fantastic. And so these are the things that really, but as far as characters go, the last play I did, The Magnolia Tree, which toured uh, around Victoria and regionally, was the best work I've ever done and the best character I've ever had. Wow. Um, the Taverna, which we, we did want to ask about, but with, uh, Maria Mercedes was in that with you as well, wasn't she? Yeah. We didn't get to actually work together, but she was in it, like being a good Greek girl because it was set in a Greek Taverna. So there were a lot of, um, yeah, Greek actors in it. It was just such a great experience and also just seeing Aussies, and this is including the crew, coming on board for bottom dollar Amazing. to get the work out there and help this guy that's been so prolific in our industry and lost his funding. And we all just jumped in and that sort of thing really touches my heart. And that's, you know, part of why we're in this. Oh, is to 
each other. Yeah. It's on my to-do list to watch that. I've I've seen the preview of it. It's so, fun. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've covered the my next question, which was a fan question about public reaction. So we'll move to Ken's. Cole Taylor, this is a comment to you, Totty. Hi, Totty. Loved you as Gloria. You had some great scenes with Annie Phelan. The boiling water scene looked so real. You acted that brilliantly. Oh, that is so nice to hear because I never thought my work was any good. So I, I accept the compliment. I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. A lot more like that on, on the Facebook page, The Talking Prisoner. Um, just before my next one, can we just talk quickly talk about your theatre, just some other ones that you've done as well? Because you're right, like it's never yeah. listed. You know, yeah, I did a great... A great um, national tour of a play called Sex with Strangers with Sam Johnson. Wow. And he'd just come off playing Molly. So we had to get Molly out of his body, <laughs> get him into this character. But Sam is an extraordinary actor and it, it was an American um, production that I was so lucky to get to see off Broadway when I was in New York, when I got offered the role. It's wow. like, I'm going, hang on, that's that play. And so I went to see it and, um, we did our own version of it, but it was about two writers from um, two different generations. And he was a younger guy with the older woman, but um, intellectually and creatively where they met and where they missed each other. And it was a, a, a love affair of two intellects. And so it was brilliantly written, really fast paced, two, um, two sets, I'm gonna say, it's a singer of, of 45 minutes of nonstop banter. And it was, uh, beautifully directed by Lucy Freeman, and I'm really proud of the work I did in that. Amazing. Do you prefer TV or theatre? As an actor, uh, with the work that's come my way, theatre. Okay. And I'll tell you why, because you get the time to develop the character. And, you know, before I get into rehearsals, I'm already 85% off the page, meaning I've 85% I've got the words down. And then you've got all that time to discover who you are in relationship to the other person and what they mean to you and deepen your character. So on opening night, you've got a good chunk of it. And as it goes on, the character develops more and more. So every night it's an ex exploration into what else you can find in the character. And I find that really rewarding. Amazing. Uh, Stuart Kerry from the UK said, hi, Toddy, wonderful performance as Gloria in Prisoner. Did your aunt Olivia ever see it and comment on your appearance? On how bad I looked. <laughs> my appearance <laughs> or my appearance? So She's yeah. probably broken hearted that I was in such a mess at the time. Um, no, I don't, I don't think she saw it. I think her career was out of control in America at the time. And I certainly didn't send it to her. Yeah. So thank you for your comment, but um, no, I don't think she ever saw it. I know she knows of the show, but I, I never kind of said, you know, look what I'm doing, never. Her or, you know, anyone, until social media and you have to. Yes. <laughs> you want to plug what you're doing, but yeah. Not, in my day, yeah, the world's changed a lot. Yeah. This one's from Max Dweeb from um, the UK. He says, hey, Toddy, like others, I think your character should have been in longer. I thought she was great and you played her brilliantly. Did you audition for any other roles? And he also says, I first saw you in The Henderson Kids. What was it like working with Kylie? And are you still in touch? And how is your amazing Aunt Olivia? Max, that's so many questions. Um, my Aunt Olivia is, um, as we know, she's... Um, She's working with her body, you know, she's got stage four cancer and that's, she's, you know, positive. That's all I can say on that one. The Henderson's kids, um, Kylie is a sweetheart. I actually became really close with Danny because I did a national tour of Greece and um, Danny was in it. We became really good friends. And the last time I saw Kylie was, I'm also a marriage celebrant, Max. And I um, officiated James Rain, who's an Australian singer for the Australian Call, I officiated his wedding and Kylie was there. So it's always beautiful to, um, to catch up with her. We have really fond memories of over the years, you know, of um, being in the same industry, the same record label. And of course, you know, Henderson's kids when we were all kids, but she was a real kid. <laughs> and Ben Mendelssohn, of course, who's amazing. And Nadine Garner, who I, um, 
I did Dr. Blake with recently. Well, recently, Co take COVID away. It's recently, <laughs> everything's kind of lost. But have I answered your question? Have I answered? Did it, actually, did I read somewhere that you did the first uh, same-sex couple marriage in Victoria? Was that you or someone else? I did. I don't think I did the first one. No. Okay. I was pretty quickly in there because I was working with a, um, a same-sex, a female um, couple, and we were going to do a commitment ceremony and we're literally holding on, just praying that it was going to get over the line. And the day that we, the same sex, um, got, you know, legally over the line in Australia, we got together and opened a bottle of, I've got goosebumps, opened a bottle of champagne and had a cheese plate and we were so excited and we planned the wedding. I don't think I got in first, but we were, we, we it was so exciting. Yeah. yeah. It was like one of the best things that's happened to our country. We're catching up finally. Amazing, definitely, yes. Uh, Darren Hembro said, cannot believe you have this very talented lady on your show. Amazing. I just want to say how well Toddy played Gloria in Prisoner, a role which, in my own opinion, was too far short-lived, should have been in it longer, a great opposite to Myra, played by Amy. Wow, I'm so touched. I, I'm really I'm blown away that you guys um, think that. So thank you. This one's from David Beards. Love Totty in the recent Aussie movie, The, the Taverna. Watched it several times already. So wonderfully Melbourne. What was it like to be in that movie? Oh, so wonderfully Melbourne. Like, re we actually had to cut a whole lot of times because the trams were so noisy oh. right outside. The windows that were blacked out. Um, thank you for that. I really, really enjoyed that. It was very fast moving. It was pretty much as fast paced as a soap because of the budget. So it was like, you get one take unless you fall over a chair or swear. You you know, that's it, you're done. So you sort of had to, and sometimes you didn't know when your scene was gonna come up. I remember being there since about 9.30 and I didn't go on until about two in the morning and then my one scene happened. And then, so, you know, you're trying to battle being tired and you know then be on so it was but it's exciting like that's challenging for us as actors because we need to be able to pull it out when um whenever and that's a challenge being an actor you can't just be in the mood <laughs> you've got to know how to get in the mood <laughs> how good are the greek restaurants in melbourne i mean i used to go to stavros's tavern in um, albert park for many years and it was me just too and smash plates Danny Minogue and I, we got a big table together for Valentine's Day. This is like maybe 10 years ago at Stavros's Tavern. Oh, really? And they give, they give you the plates. So after you've eaten and you're half tanked, you get that, you, they put on the Greek music and they give you these unvarnished um, plates. They've just been, you know, kilned, I guess. And you smash them on the floor and dance. And oh, we had so much fun. I wish I had my phone up and show you pictures of of it. I've got pictures of it in here. Of wow. Danny and I with moustaches on. We all put on several <laughs> moustaches. Yeah, the moustache. I had mine upside down in my chin for a while and then a monobrow with it. <laughs> he's such a gentleman. I love Stavros. He, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so sad that he's not there anymore. Um, miss his food. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jason Burridge said it would be interested to know if Toddy still kept in touch with any of her fellow actors in the Henderson kids, like Ben Mendelsohn, Nadine Gardner, Annie Jones, but that's also a common question for many other fans as well about the Henderson. Right, well, Ben Mendelsohn, I mean, he went on to do such great things. I mean, Bloodline and, oh, incredible. I've, he lives in Sydney, so but I've run into him a number of times. It's always just beautiful to see him. Yeah. But we're not like, you know, best buddies. We're... we're 10, 15 years apart in age, it's sort of, you know, but um, Nadine Garner, I was just mentioning earlier that when I did Dr. Blake, it was just like no times passed. I have seen her in between. We did something else together. I think it was Jack Irish. So we've seen each other through the years and there's a bond that you just have because you've got shared experiences. But I tend to, um, I mean, I've got some friends that are younger, but I tend to hold on to longer relationships with people sort of in my my age group, but I've got lots of friends from different acting jobs. Like the series I did, Fire, um, the other female lead, Fiona McGregor, she's 10 years younger than me and we've stayed um, really good friends and I'm her daughter's godmother, so, you know. And lots of people, um, you know, from the early days of doing Primetime, which is a, a show Channel 9 picked up. You know, Antonia Murphy is one of my best friends and she was from that show. And 
um, Elise Platt, you know. Elise. So I, I, I do collect friends um, <laughs> through the work we do, which is really nice. Yeah. This is a comment from Jake Thompson. Please let Otty know the Shantuzzi's version of He's Gonna Step On You Again was far superior to the Party Boys release. <laughs> Do you know what? It was so wild because we didn't know the Party Boys were doing it. They didn't know we were doing it and we were in oh, really? studio at the same time and released it at the same time. But um, thank you. For, was it Jason that said that comment? Yeah. Jake. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jason. We loved our version, but, you know, I, I the Swanee version was kind of good too because it was, you know, kind of more masculine and, of course, it was more masculine. We were four girls. But, um, yeah, thank you for that. We love that song. I love that song. Actually, I should pull out my tap board and have a go to that song. It's got a really good beat. Great song. Are you still in the Shantuzzi? Or you no, I actually left just before COVID oh. because I went to the States to go and study with Ivana Chubbuck, who's my favourite acting coach, and I was in the full-time, well, not a full-time program. I was doing it full-time with a lot of teachers and her, and then three months later, COVID happens, and I came back. But I'm focused on other things. I've um, written a TV series I'm trying to finish, and I'm doing some ambassador work and I've pitched another show to another network. So I'm actually quite happy to move into the, because I've turned 60 this year and I just sort of wanted to get to bed early, you know? I wanted to get to bed early and not um, be up really late doing gigs. But um, I'm just sort of looking at when everything opens up even more, getting back into theatre and film and, and acting is my main focus now. You don't look 60, wow. You must but I'm 59 you. still. Give me a few months. You don't months. even, you don't even well, look I've got a light shining on my face to make me look a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> um, next question was from Ollie James. It was about talking about the uh, the hot water scene and uh, just said how wonderful. The last, one. Yeah. the last one, Mandy Musson. Hi, Toddy. With having a famous aunt, the stunning Olivia Newton-John, my fave female artist ever, were kids ever jealous of you when you were younger? Do you ever see her? Mandy, I do see her. Obviously, the last couple of years I haven't because of COVID. And she's actually not well enough to travel to Australia. So it's really up to me to go there. But we're, we're very close, like I am with my dad's sister as well. You know, she's my mum's sister. But she's um, a big part of my life. Very, very important to me. Um, that was the Olivia question. What was the other one? Sorry, Ken? The kids ever jealous of you. Oh, yeah, they were, which was really sad yeah. because I never, it, it never went to my head that she was my aunt. If anything, it kind of like made, blew me away a bit. And yeah, some kids act out, kids can be jealous and it was school time. And yeah, there was some silly jealousy going on, but, you know, I didn't buy into it. <laughs> Well, that was amazing. I know we were pushed for time, so we didn't skip a few things, but, you know, it was amazing to learn about your life and absolute honour. You've done so much and, and, you know, so proud of what you have done. Um, well, I'm doing more. This is just the beginning. Yes. I move into life, right? We're very excited to hear about what you are working on. It sounds exciting. Thanks. Anything you'd like to add, Ken? Um, done? <laughs> no, no. And we'll okay. just put up a link to that uh, big um, big umbrella. That no, big umbrella, that'd be great yes. because any, any people that can help down in the kitchen or donate or just give a shout out or follow them on Instagram or would be fantastic. So, um, guys, it's been lovely talking to you, and I'm really grateful for all of the questions that the fans have sent. And um, yeah, um, I had a lovely time chatting. That was episode 36 of Talking Prisoner. Thank you so much for watching. If you could please subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our videos where you can and also like our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter pages. And this episode will also be available across all the podcast platforms, including Spotify, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio and the rest. And also on the talkingprisoner.com website. Thank you so much, Toddy. It was amazing to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Toddy.